Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to discuss how we do measure time. Measuring of time is very essential for future humans because without the exact time, our GPS location would not give us the exact location that we are and the satellites will not coordinate with your devices so that's why the exact time is very important so how do we measure time in ancient uh, times we usually use some devices to measure time so day in and day out we measure time for one day through sunsets and one whole day would take 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds. Uh, this is the exact time for the Earth to rotate. And this is the reason why we have one whole day ad added in the fourth year on our calendar. And on one year, we have springs, summer, autumn, and winter. Phases of the moon, like the shape from full moon to a crescent and back to full moon again, shows one month had passed. Position of the sun using the sundial. The down point about this is you can only use it during daylight. The unit of time is the most basic one, a second, and we also have the millisecond, minute, hour, day, and year. And we have century, which is equals to 100 years. A millennium which is equals to 1,000 years or 10 centuries. Clock. Water clock is not accurate because of change in temperature. If it's very cold, the uh, amount of water that goes down to the orifice of the this device would actually flow slower. And if it's very hot, some water will actually evaporate. Next one is the hourglass, which is also inaccurate when time changes and also affects due to temperature. Candle clock is also inaccurate, maybe because of we can we don't know the exact uh, size of the clock, maybe the the uh, the light that consumes the the candle is too fast, and also it uh, affects due to temperature, and also the sundial as we have uh, uh, discussed earlier that it only measures time in daylight, and also the rotation of Earth changes. Uh, in a particular year or a particular month so the direction of of the sun the solstice changes so these are all accurate inaccurate I'm measuring the next uh, measuring of time is the pendulum clock Without the thought of Galileo Galilei, the pendulum clock would not be immortalized. Because, as he said, uh, when pendulum um, do one oscillation, it actually doesn't change. The time doesn't change on its oscillation. So we have here a uh, video on the set up of a pendulum clock and by the way pendulum clock is invented by Christian Huygens
So this is the setup of a pendulum clock. We have here the parts of it. Okay, we have the weight, the pendulum bob, it's actually called pendulum bob, the length of the pendulum, we have the, the anchor, we have the anchor here, we have the escape wheel, the main wheel, and the weight, this one. So as time passes, the weight will actually go down. Okay. So if we change the length of the pendulum, the speed of the uh, motion will also change. So as you can see here. And this is how it works. Okay, and here's another video for a uh, pendulum clock. So again, this is our weight here, the pendulum bob, the escape gear, and the main gear. So this is how it works in, in real time. So the me mechanism is very simple. So it stops from rolling because of this. And every oscillation of the pendulum counts as one second. All right, so this are the example of the pendulum clock. The downside again, if the weight goes down and you have not noticed it, um, of course the time will, you cannot get the exact time. And uh, you need to watch it more often for you to reset the weight of it. So this is still inaccurate. So another invention for Measuring time is the quartz. So let's just watch the video here. How do quartz clocks work? When it says quartz on your dial, your timepiece uses a quartz crystal to keep time. Quartz is the second most abundant mineral and is made up out of silicon dioxide. When compressed or bent, quartz generates a charge of electricity. Likewise, when electricity is applied to a piece of quartz, it will bend or change shape. This is called the piezoelectric effect. Jacques and Pierre Curie discovered that quartz possessed this property in 1880. Although it took until 1969 for the first commercial quartz wristwatch to become available, the Seiko Estron. Quartz can be used in very small sizes. A tiny bar of quartz is cut like a tuning fork and then positioned and zapped to oscillate at a frequency of 32,768 Hz. That number is the result of 2 to the power of 15. The power of 2 is chosen to easily chain divisions by 2, and so obtain a 1 Hz signal to drive the watch's seconds hand. Quartz timepieces are hereby inherently accurate and conveniently cheap to produce. Want to learn more? Subscribe and or... Okay. So this is a quartz crystal which is actually made from silicon dioxide. But this is still inaccurate because as time goes by, maybe the time or the me mechanism of the clock uh, will be affected by temperature and also the, the wear and tear of your clock so that's why this is still inaccurate temperature difference may be too cold too hot which affects the mechanism of your uh, watch 
So finally, we have invented the atomic clock. So let's just watch the time. Video. So in order to make the super accurate atomic clocks used today, a new strategy was needed. Physicists knew that atoms oscillated at very high and very specific rate. Not only that, but atoms from the same element will oscillate at exactly the same rate. Virtually immune to environmental factors and with manufacturing errors being irrelevant, atoms seem like the perfect oscillator. In 1967, the standard was decided and a second was officially defined as 9,192,631,770 oscillations of a cesium-133 atom. This number is what's called its resonant frequency. By bombarding a cesium atom with radio waves tuned to that exact same frequency, the cesium will resonate, absorbing some of that energy and changing to a higher energy state. A bit like an opera singer smashing a glass with a high note. The idea was to use this change in energy state to indicate that the radio wave frequency was exactly right. Let me explain. They kept the quartz from before as it is still a very good oscillator, but instead used its resonance and the electrical pulses it produces to determine the frequency of a radio transmitter. Radio wave frequency is measured in hertz or waves per second. Like counting the number of electrical pulses in a quartz clock, we can now count the number of radio waves to determine when a second has passed. So for for example, if we know that a piece of quartz resonates at 32,768 times per second, then the radio transmitter will transmit a frequency of 32,768 hertz. When we've counted the same number of waves, then we know that a second has passed. Keeping this frequency exactly the same though is very difficult because as we know, quartz changes its frequency due to environmental factors and so in turn this alters the radio wave frequency. This is where the cesium comes in. Like I said before, when a cesium atom resonates, it absorbs some of the energy from the radio waves and changes to a higher energy state. These higher energy state cesium atoms are detected after they pass through the radio waves. If the radio wave frequency is exact, then the higher energy cesium atoms continue to flow into the detector at their peak rate. If the frequency isn't quite right, then fewer detections are made. So another jolt of electricity is sent to the quartz oscillator, altering the frequency so it's just right to make those cesium atoms start resonating again, just like tuning a radio. This method of feeding output information back in is called a feedback loop and basically means the atomic clock is self-adjusting. Unbelievable. All right, so as you can see, Atomic clock is very accurate because of its feedback loop. It could actually correct itself. So that's why we have now the atomic clock that uses cesium. Right? So that's how we actually get the exact time for measuring time, which is the atomic clock that we are using nowadays. So I hope you guys um, learned from our discussion today and if you have any questions just leave the comments below and have a good day.